Good grief. Why do they never go in for me? Hey everybody, back again, yes, with another vinyl watch. So this time um, I picked up a whole load of early 80s records from a chap on Facebook Marketplace. Um, this guy had a tons of records to sell, but unfortunately a lot of them were in pretty shocking condition. And even some of the ones I've got, I've now found out, well, they're not great, they're listenable. They're all listenable, but some of them aren't in such good shape. But star of the, and most of them are a quid each. I paid a little bit more, I paid four quid for the first thing I'm gonna show, and I'm so chuffed I got it. Even though one of the records is a bit crackly, but it's still well worth it. I've got a copy of this. So this is Gary Newman, Living Ornaments, uh, 79 and 80. So this is the box set of the two live albums he released in 1981, I think. Um, so if I open it up, so the first album is Living Ornaments, 79. And this is, uh, this was recorded at Hammersmith Odeon in 1979. Uh, probably would have been after the release of uh, Pleasure Principle. So there's the back cover. Got quite a nice inner sleeve as well. And there's the band. And then we've got, I think this is this is the um, Our Friends Electric Cups label, isn't it? I think. I think that's where it comes from. This is a great performance. It's uh, based mainly on Pleasure Principle and bits of uh, the debut album and yeah, mainly those two, I mean. Absolutely stoked to get that. And then the other one, Living Ornaments 80, which I might actually get a, the cover is immaculate, but I might get another copy of it. If I, well, if I see one. So this one was recorded at the Hammersmith Odeon on, in 1980, on 79, um, on the tele, tele Tour, which is the Telecom album tour. It's a game, isn't it? There we go. Seems a bit washed out, I don't know. And then you've got the Telecom label on that one. Absolute great stuff. I think I prefer the 79. Album more than the 80, but probably because I do prefer Pleasure Principle to Telecon anyway. But I couldn't believe it when I saw that. I thought, oh, please be in good nick, please be in good nick. And the covers themselves are in gorgeous nick. And 79 is, is just perfect. I think maybe the person who um owned it before didn't like 79 as much i don't know because it's, it's in better nick anyway i also picked up a, um, an upgrade to my copy of dance by gary newman i've shown this before uh his 1982 album so there he is um in a sleeve with lyrics and kind of a moody, moody silhouette on the label. That's quite a nice label, isn't it? Um, what is on this? I'm trying to think what the big single was of this. Most of these albums had hit singles and I've just dropped the cover. There we go. Um, it is, um, She's Got Claws was off this, which has a top 10 here. I think that's the only single off it. But it's, it's um, a little bit of a change of, of, I think I said this before, a little bit of a change of um, sound. It was, it was much more slower. Uh, there was more, who played bass? I think Mick Khan played bass on it, didn't he? Why does it say that? Yeah, Mick Khan. Roger Taylor does some drums on it as well. 
bass drums on you are you are well, there you go and Mick Khan plays bass on quite a few tracks it looks like yeah with his um, that distinctive style yes so that was a, that's a great listen I was almost as excited by this as I was with the Living Ornaments box set because this is a brilliant album. So I've got Untitled by Mark and the Mambers. This is a fantastic album. <coughs> this is a batch and a half. This is a wadge and a half, actually. So this is a double album. One is, um, one is a normal album. Then you've got a 12 inch with three tracks. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why, at some point the insides got stuck. There must have been something, I don't know, maybe something about the cover or something. But it's not too bad, but the vinyl is gorgeous. Um, so we've got Matt Johnson plays on quite a few tracks from the The. Might have been one of his first, first things he did. Very, ah, uh, there we go. There's, that's the, uh, is that the, yeah, that's the main album. So there's the label on the main album. And there's the other one. I can't remember what the label is now. Use the 12 inch, oh, it's the same. That's the same. So, this is the main album, is a really different, it's real departure from Soft Cell. So, it's got first side is sort of Mark Arm and co writes, um, but it's much more in the style of what he would later do in his solo career. And then he's got a load of covers on the rest of the. We've got Twilights and Low Lights on the 12 inches, actually does sound a bit like a um, soft cell track. But you've got a Scott Walker cover, Big Louise. You've got a Lou Reed cover, Caroline Says, which is a gorgeous version. And you've got If You Go Away by Jack Brell. Well, he, he loved Jack Brell. He loves Jack Brell. And he's done a couple of albums of his stuff. So there's the whole of the band. You've got Anne Hogan on here who he later collaborated with on Stars We Are and other albums. Cindy Ecstasy's off here, on here, which is on some of the soft cell recordings. Uh, there's Matt Johnson. Uh, yeah. And then you've got a cover of Terrapin as well by Sid Barrett, as well on the 12 inch. I was, oh, this is just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic record. Um, much more moody than, well, Soft Cell was pretty moody anyway, but it's much more, much less synth pop, more, it's much more um, acoustic instruments and stuff. So there we go, Untitled by Mark and the Mambas. I also got an upgrade um, for this, one of my favorite albums of all time. This is Who's Afraid of the Art of Noise by The Art of Noise, produced by Trevor Horn. Um, I actually swapped my old copy with James Griffiths for a copy of The Buggles, which I was well chuffed about. Um, but this is one of my, one of my favorite, favorite albums. I think this was groundbreaking at the time, and it? I'd never ever heard anything like it. I'm sure there've been plenty of albums been like it before, but <coughs> I fell in love with Close to the Edit. I absolutely fell in love with that. I could not get enough of that song. Had that on a seven inch, Moments in Love is beautiful. Um, but this is a marvelous, marvelous record. So I was delighted to have that. Not great. Right, I also got two Grace Jones albums, and it's two of the three, what are they called, Center Point? Is it Central Point? West Point? Central Point? Anyway, th three albums she recorded, was it in the Bahamas? In the Caribbean somewhere. 
Um, so they were warm leather at, nightclub in, and living my life. Now I got warm leather at, which is really good. So on here you've got Love is a Drug and uh, Private Life, which is a amazing single. Warm Leather at her version of it isn't as good as the Normals version, which is one of those synth pop absolute classics. It's, it's just one of the first synth pop singles, I think. An amazing song. Um, yeah, on that kind of dark blue island label. But it's a really good, really good album. Got a cover of Love is a Drug on it as well. Mainly covers actually, but terrific stuff. And I also got a copy of Living My Life, which is an iconic cover. Look at that. I actually prefer this album. It seems to be more, she can stretch, she seemed to, well, the musicians seem to stretch out a lot more on this album. Or maybe that was the impression on first listen, um, rather than on Warm Leather Act. Um, I have to get hold of a copy of, copy of Nightclubbing now. Um, but Nipple to the Bottle, Apple Stretching, My Jamaican Guy. Um, I think this is better than Warm Leather Act. Whether it's better than, whether I would think it's better than Nightclubbing, I have to go and listen to that. I don't know if I've ever listened to it all the way through. Probably know loads of songs from it. This one's an original copy with the original inner, which is quite nice. And again on that blue island label. Really, really enjoyable record. Right. Working straight on. I also picked up, got a copy of Debbie Harry's debut album, Cuckoo, with the gorgeous cover <coughs> um, by H.R. Geiger, of course, responsible for Aliens and, um, well, Alien, rather, and uh, uh, Brain Salad Surgery cover and other artwork. Um, apparently, this is these, the Skewers are supposed to represent the four elements. That's what I read somewhere. So this is this represented um, Nile Rogers and Bernard Edwards' first foray into producing rock artists. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Amazing cover. <clears throat> the album is an interesting listen. Um. You've got three distinct groups of songs. You've got the ones that Debbie Harry and Chris Stein wrote by themselves, which are more Blondie-esque, I guess. Then you've got the ones that they co-wrote with Nile Rodgers and Bernard Edwards, which are kind of a halfway house. And then you've got the ones that Nile Rodgers and Bernard Edwards wrote, and they're much more funky. Um, I have to admit, they probably didn't hit their stride as a production duo for the rock on seats until they did Let's Dance. But then you could argue that basically that was David Bowie's Chic album. So, but this is... Kind of, the songs are good, but considering that she was the biggest pop star in the world at the time, this album probably should have been better. I mean, it's good, but it should have been amazing. And it kind of isn't. I, mean, I do like it. Things like Jump Jump, the funky stuff, Backfired is good. Jam with Moving. Um, but it's kind of almost as if it doesn't really have that much of a personality of its own. It seems to be, this album seems to be a hodge, like a halfway house between the two. What? the Chic organisation we were known for and what De what Blondie were known for and it doesn't quite meet in the mid doesn't really gel don't know still very good listen really good listen 
Then we've got one of the daftest albums I think I've heard for a long time. So I picked up, he had, there was a copy of this, Hazy Fantasy, which is battle hymns for children singing. So this is um, basically nursery rhymes done up in a mix, a bizarre mix of different genres. It seems to be bits of Burundi beat from Bow Wow Wow and Adam and the Ants. You've got bits of Dexy's Midnight Runners. You've got bits of hoedown country. It's a bizarre mix of, of hodgepodge of stuff. Um, but it's, it's an interesting listen. Um, comes in the original sleeve and it is on Regard Records. I've never heard of that label before. Um, biggest hit was John Wayne is Big Leggy and I only realised reading up about this album that John Wayne is Big Leggy is actually a commentary on um, white men basically shafting Native Americans, and if you read the main verse of John Wayne is Big Leggy, basically he gets an in uh, a North American squaw, North American woman, basically sodomizes her, just to, and that's the metaphor for um, white man doing over Native Americans, which nobody got at the time. Everybody thought it was a, a novelty cowboy song, so that's quite quite subversive getting that into top of the pops um yeah and also it came with a really nice photo book of the two um kate garner was quite a striking woman and uh they certainly had their own style didn't they Apparently Jeremy Healy was a mate, was a school friend of, of Boy George and uh, Boy George was so jealous that he'd got on top of the pops before Boy George and he just hated him for doing it. Um, and then Hazy Fantasy um, accused Boy George of ripping off their look with the drugs and stuff, which I think probably he did. And they didn't talk for a while. So there we go. He's Fantasy. Bonkers record. Absolutely bonkers. But really enjoyable. Right, okay. More seriously. So I've picked up another John Fox album as well. I'm terrible. I should really, really, really sort myself out and actually get some John Fox era Ultravox on vinyl because I don't have any. I think I've got one single double single but that's it this is a great synth pop album really really good um this is his third one after metamatic and the garden the garden yeah the garden was gorgeous it was um mainly i think it was more traditional instruments but this is back to synth pop the healthy dose of euro pop and there's some great songs on here endless is great your dress, running across thin ice with tigers. I mean, it's a great, it's a great album. This is really good. Really nice design. Very plain golden, got a golden label. This is on Virgin. Not sure who played on it. Pretty. Produced by Zeus B. Held, who also played keyboards, who was a crowd rock producer. I can't remember which band he produced now, but he worked in Germany. So this is a great album, really good. Right, next one, more synth pop. This time it's Visage with the Anvil. Um, one of my favourite Visage singles was Night Train, which was top 20 hit. 83 and I remember looking around for the single for ages didn't never came across it um, finally got it on this one uh, this is a really good album 
Damn Don't Cry is a great song. There's a lot of sounds on here that could be considered proto-industrial and maybe sort of had led to Depeche Mode developing that kind of more clanking sound. Although they probably got it off those German bands. Um, Neu Deutsche Wahl or whatever it was. I stand some Neubarten and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so we've got Midju is actually on this one. Um, nice tie-in to, to the like the John Fox album. And Billy Curry, Rusty Egan. Great stuff. Got a lovely picture of Steve. St I think that's a great picture of Steve Strange there. Um, very plain label on Polydor. There we go. Very plain. But uh, cracking album. Another cracking pickup there from from this batch. And the final one, I did get a, an upgrade copy of I. I like this singer. I don't. She's probably of all the new wave pop singers in the early '80s. She's the one that's got the least cred, and probably for good reason. But I picked up a copy of Toya Toya Toya. Um, this is definitely an upgrade copy. Live album from 1980. Showcasing her more art pop side rather, rather than the pop side. She, heavily influenced by, I think, by Roxy Music and Eno and stuff like that. Um, especially on things like Aya and Danced. <coughs> Victims of the Riddle, stuff like that. I love that cover. I always have loved that cover. I think it's a gorgeous cover. Um, on the Safari label. I don't have to get this one out. It's there. As far as I know, she was the only person who recorded on Safari. There probably, there probably are other people, but I don't know who they are. <coughs> so there we go. Fabulous batch of early 80s records. I was ecstatic at quite a few of the, picking up quite a few of those. So top listens, all of them. And I've, I've had a way of a time listening to these. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody if you've stuck around to the end and you're actually listening to this. Thank you. Uh, and I'll see you all again soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.